Hello, hello everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're well. And if you're not, maybe we can provide a little bit of light entertainment for you. See how it goes. Right, I've just come racing back up the stairs because I had somebody knocking at the door just down below. And one of those things, it's like momentary panic. Oh no, how long is this going to take? But it was just a moment or two, so that was good. But stairs, yeah, you know. Right, so how are you doing? Are you keeping yourself occupied? Are you having to be at work? Are you doing something interesting? Have you picked up a new hobby? Or uh, discovered a new TV series to watch or whatever? You know, any of those sort of things. I hope you're having fun. Wherever you can find it, that's appropriate for the life that you lead. That's basically the best way I can think of to put it for you. Anyway, so... What are we up to? Um, we're still reading these English fairy tales, these ones up here, um, collected by Joseph Jacobs and published in the 1890s. I don't know if I'm going to finish the whole book because there's quite a few in the book. I shall unlock it and see how far through we are. Um, and then, and possibly we will, well, we'll have something to drink along the way. We'll have some snacks along the way. We shall obviously read some stories along the way. I will chat as I always do. I will interrupt the story to explain something in a way that probably isn't needed, but that's okay. We can go with that. Uh, we, If we finish in time, finish appropriately, um, I'm intending to have another go at doing some more craft stuff. I have printed off. So this is where we got last time with the Hello Kitty ears. This is the, the temporary one with just done on paper and then coloured in with felt tip pen over the top of the greyed out area. So that, as you can see, does isn't really quite big enough to look right. So what I did was I printed it the other way on the page because that was printed this way on the page. Hi Blue, great to see you. Thank you for being here. I hope you can have some fun today. Um, so that's that size, which I did there. See, you can see it's the same size. And I was thinking that that was going to be the right size when I first printed it, which is why this one's on light card. But it's not. It's a little bit small. So then I had another go at printing it by putting it the other way on the page because my... Um, so the same image but turned around that way on the page because my image handler will just do it to fit the page but keep it at the right ratio. But that one looked a little bit too big. It's like, yeah, okay, no, I don't think so. I don't think I'm really going to be that big. So I tried scaling it and also took out the colour out of the out of the bow. So this one is looking a bit better. It's bigger than this. Just a bit, I think. I think it's a bit bigger. Hang on. Shall I have a look at it through the... It's about that much wider. I don't think that's quite enough. I think we need something slightly bigger than this, which is only slightly bigger than that one. Um, but definitely, so slightly bigger than this, but not as big as this. So that means I need to make some more guesses as to the scaling and tell it to print again and see how we go. But if we can do that, then we can do some more attempts at headbands and do it just you know the whole temporary version of it that I'm doing with the double-sided tape all that sort of stuff we'll just see how we go it depends on how long it takes us for a while I'm reading how much time is left over for actually doing some crafting we'll see look did you see my new book there it's a journal but it's one of those um, flip the sequins the other way and it changes colors which is the main reason I got it didn't get it because the pages <laughs> I've got paper to write in elsewhere. I don't really need that one. Anyway, that's for the fun of it. So I'm going to just put a few little bits of text into the chat box for now to trigger off some stuff for later on because it's got timers. So we've got, hi. There you go. Welcome and thanks for being here. Feel free to chat or lurk as much as you like. I love having you here, which is true. This is all true because I wrote it all myself. While reading, I chat between chapters, but you're welcome to chat with each other. Though, you're also welcome to chat with each other. Sometimes when you write something, you phrase it a certain way, but when you speak it, you phrase it differently. Have you noticed that? 
It's one of those quirks of, of language. Uh, what was your favourite old book while growing up? That's a good starting point for giving people questions to ask. Uh, I'll put a couple of other things in here just so that people have got them in case they need them. Um, right. No, nope, that one didn't work. There. So, um, those who've been here before, I read old children's books. I should probably just say hello to everyone who's new here because otherwise I'm going to go over all of this again. Sorry, my hair's just annoying me at the moment. There's not a lot I can do about it. Hi, I'm Jeff. I read old children's books. It kind of goes with the hair, you know, the old look. Um, the sort of books I read are ones like the one up in the corner there. That image. Sorry, just trying to reach behind my magic curtain. Um, and these sort of books. These are the ones I grew up reading. And they're also the sort of books that I tend to read on stream because they are public domain books, which means public domain means that they are no longer within copyright. And so because they're not within copyright, I'm not breaking anyone's copyright laws and I'm also not stealing profit from somebody who either they themselves or their estate should be receiving some sort of income from for public performance of their books. Um, I will very, very occasionally read something that isn't public domain, but I have specific permission to do so, if that's the case. Right, so the sort of books I grew up reading were ones like these. So this one is 100 years old, this one is 125 years old. They were just sort of normal books around our house. The only other time you got any variety was if you were able to find something interesting at the school library, because our, our area was small enough that the children's section at the local library wasn't very much. It was mainly picture books because the schools had decent libraries and so therefore they didn't see any need to provide them at the public library. It's all privately funded at that stage. Um, and so the only way you could get newer books was at the school library or ones that were given to you as presents at your birthday. That's how I first came across any of the R.H. Dana books. Um, Dana wrote, hang on, let's actually pull up something about him so I can tell you a little bit more accurately. Richard Henry Dana Jr. was an American lawyer and politician. Is that the one? He's not, I don't think he's the writer. No, that's not the one I want, I think. Well, maybe it is. Anyway, he wrote adventure books for boys. You know, boys out there doing stuff, but how often they would be set within an actual period of history, an actual historic event. Let's hang on, I'll have another look at that, see if that's the one I wanted, after all. No, it wasn't Dana. He wrote two years before the mast. I'm thinking of somebody else. I'm pretty sure I've read Two Years Before the Mast. No, I can't remember who the other one was. Anyway, there's this other chap who wrote this book. Uh, it was given to me as a kid's paperback book, you know, sort of about this big. And I read it really, really quickly. It was fun. It was adventurous. It was actually written a long time ago, but this was a re-edition, a re republished copy of the book. Um... So for me, it was new, it was fresh, it was a brand new book. We didn't often get them. They were Christmas presents and birthday presents. Or if you were really sick and off school for a while, mum might sometimes have things hidden away in a little paper bag up in the top of a cupboard where you couldn't get to it. And it would be given to you as something, just sort of something encouraging to have a bit of a fun with. Sometimes it would be an activity, sometimes it would be a book. But they were not things that you were just given any old time. They were things for if you needed a little bit of encouragement, which made a lot of sense. So, no, it wasn't Dana. Who was it? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I can't even remember the title at the moment. It'll come back to me when I don't need it. The information will, just because that's why my brain works. Anyway, so I grew up reading old books unless there were new books that were gifted to us. Or they were through the school library, which some of those were pretty old too. Um, 
But because of that, I was given an inside view of what life used to be like for people because even when an author is writing something purely from their imagination they will ex still express their own personal worldview even when they're trying to be balanced and bring other people's views into it it will still reflect how they see the world and when you are living in one country and the books you are reading come from another country on the other side of the world you actually start to learn more about the way that country used to be than most others where you live do. Uh, and it was something that just sort of added an extra depth of, of understanding when I was growing up. I had an aunt who was born and raised in England, married um, one of my uncles, and as you can tell from the accent, I'm from New Zealand. They met in England. They tr she had already lived and worked in Italy. She was an entomologist, that's someone who studies insects. She had done entomology at university. He had done uh, geography and geology, I think, some sort of combination. So he had all sorts of understanding about how you could work to enhance agriculture if you understood the underlying rocks and soils and the climate around you and all that sort of stuff, what you could bring in that would help stuff that was naturally occurring, such as guano, which is bird poop that's been sitting there for a long time and get building up um, and also settling down sort of thing. It does this sort of processing itself to a certain level and then you can put it on the on put put it on as fertilizer on the fields and that can help with plant growth. Uh, he also did things like use of rock phosphate, which is a mineral fertilizer for plants, uh, for, for paddocks and stuff like that. And it, we use it for top dressing in New Zealand and it just it helps with plant growth because it's supplying nutrients that are not there. So he had this sort of a background, both very scientific. They met somewhere, I think it was in England, got married did a lot of traveling and ended up living and working in China for seven years before it became a communist country. So I had this aunt who had, great aunt actually, who had life experience from England, life experience from Italy and also life experience from China. And they ended up coming back to New Zealand, settling in New Zealand, living the rest of their lives in New Zealand. And we would go up and I would help her with making up a big lunchtime feast, um, working on it for a couple of days, uh, doing Chinese dishes, ones that she had eaten when she was in China, uh, ones that were true to the way they they used to, to cook in the particular regions that she had been living in. And she would tell me about what it was like culturally, being in these different places that she had lived at different times. And so this became a lot more part of me, in addition to what I was drawing from all these books that I had read when I was growing up. And it just meant that my eyes were open to the rest of the world a lot more than was typical for people my age. It's one of those things. Also a fairly scientifically thinking family, various family members doing other things within the, the, um, the sciences and so it meant that you had a questioning mind, you would ask about things, somebody would explain. You know how little kids say why, why, why about anything. You say something, they would say why to it. Uh, you would explain an answer to their why and they would ask another why. And all that information was sucked in like a sponge and comes out in various parts of life. Uh, so that was normal for me. And then I realized when I was at school that it wasn't normal for everybody else. So being able to understand the nitrogen fixation properties of um, leguminous plants. We did that in our last year at secondary school in biology class. And I was wondering why the teacher had to explain it like three or four times before the others in the class kind of understood it and yet it was just so straightforward and easy to understand and then I realized it's because my grandmother had explained it to me when I was a kid before school age because she had been growing lupins in her garden cutting them off at ground level and letting the roots rot down and release the nitrogen that the nitrogenous bacteria in the nodules on the roots had produced 
into the soil and that was what the plants needed that were going to be grown there afterwards. She'd explained it and I hadn't even been school age and it made sense because she'd shown me not the bacteria but the little nodules on the roots where the bacteria lived, all that sort of stuff. She used scientific terminology, gentle scientific terminology, not overboard. Uh, but because it made sense, because she answered my question, I said, why? Why was she cutting the plants off? They were easy to pull up. She explained it. I, answer, I asked why, she explained. Uh, so if you've got around kids and kids ask why, don't just assume they're being difficult. Give them real answers, accurate answers, scientific answers, whatever that's relevant for where it is. You never know what they're going to take in and what they're going to do with it. But it made that particular class, which I had never done as a separate subject before and everyone else had, made it so much easier to understand for that particular subject area because I already knew about it. There was nothing new there that the teacher taught us, actually. I mean, some, some naming taxonomy stuff, but that was it. The, the whole concept of, of bacteria taking nitrogen out of the air and making it available to plants in the soil, that was not a hard concept because it had already been explained to me by somebody who was interested enough to tell me. So don't assume that children can't take in what you explain to them, what you share with them, because kids are brighter than you think. Their behavior may not show it, but they are. They're cleverer than you think. So I grew up with this coming from words. Words were important, words were valuable, words built worlds, either imaginary or real. And it was something that has been a part of my life ever since. So I share it with other people, especially older stories, because not just because they're out of copyright, but because we've lo we're losing them. I love the fact that this chap actually went around collecting fairy tales. They were spoken fairy tales because at the time, um, England didn't really value traditional fairy tales and he decided it was worth collecting them before they were gone, before they were forgotten, before they were overlooked because society was changing so much. And so he went around listening to people's memories of tales they were told when they were children. Often they were in a poetic format with a lot of rhyme and rhythm to them. Some of them he rephrased them so that they were more story style, but they were still based on the actual stories he was hearing. Um, and that's why we have them available. And as we are reading through this book that I'm currently reading, I am discovering stories that I always thought were Grimm's fairy tales, but some of them aren't. Some of them are actually English, or the variation is English. I do think that there was a lot of interchange between different countries with fairy tales, but I don't think that we can pin it down to being, oh, all the fairy tales are from the Brothers Grimm and Francis Perrault or whatever his name was, the French guy. Um, I do think that each country has had its own tales. And so it's actually, it's, it's really neat because it's part of our cultural background. So we might as well dig into it and enjoy it. Anyway, so enough about the why I read, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and what I read. Um, we also chat, we also, I go off on rabbit trails like this, there are some things that, that we do along the way, like we do some points redemptions, what well, pages redemptions, that's my channel points, for hairbands, um, and if that's the case, what I do is I'll put up a picker like this, or spin that, um, and one of those, those hairbands will be picked, and then I will turn on the, no, not that one, that one, which is there, yeah, the egg timer, and I will wear the hairband for six minutes while I carry on with whatever it is I'm doing, and then when it finishes, I'll turn that off and I'll take the hairband off, just as a fun thing to do. It started because I started wearing ears for one of the stories I was reading a while back. But also, if I go off on too long a ramble when I'm in the middle of reading a story, you can also initiate the ramble rocket. This thing up here, you can put in... A, re a redemption and I have to turn that on and I have two minutes that's why it says two up there I have two minutes in which I can finish off what I'm saying and then get back to the point of what I was reading in the story get back to the actual story itself 
so you can do that. There's a whole lot of other things that you can do within chat, like put, calling up random information about cats or do dogs or just general information. You can give affirmations to one another. Uh, all sorts of stuff. There are all, there's also a thing like this. Hang on. This is a new one. A lovely quote about what follows are. So if you are watching this on Twitch, if you follow me, then Twitch will notify you that when when I go live. So what that one says, and it was it was a, it's a quote from Goriki, who's who's my moder one of my moderators, and also is is brilliant at giving security information. A follow is a bookmark with reminders, and I think that's an excellent explanation. If you're on YouTube, then a subscription is a bookmark with reminders. So if you subscribe to somebody on YouTube, speaking of which, um, this is available over on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, then this is what my Twitch channel link is. If you want to be part of the chat, the redemptions for the ears, headbands, whatever they are, any of those sorts of things, uh, chatting with the other people, reminding me that I need to turn chat back on if I haven't already done that, all sorts of things like that. Um, also being able to use emotes. If you've followed me, you get a bunch of emotes that you can use. We will do some more. We will do some more. We haven't got there yet. Uh, but if you are on YouTube, it would be lovely if you do subscribe to my channel and and like the videos after I've when I'm while I'm reading them. There are some videos that I I regular some some channels that I regularly watch their videos of, so that I know I have already listened to that one as I start to listen to it or watch it. I will hit the like button because it's a reminder to me that I've actually also seen it instead of it just being. I think I've seen this one before, maybe not, whatever. But it also lets me know that you've seen it and that you have been enjoying it. And you can leave comments on them on YouTube, which is why they're not listed as being for children specifically. If you have videos that you list specifically for children, comments are disabled. You can't do them, which is a bit sad. Um, but we keep it kind. We keep it family friendly with our comments and with our chat on Twitch. If you are over on Twitch and you want to go and see what my YouTube is like, this is the link here. There's also a link over here which I shall put into chat for you. Hang on. Yes, there's the link for it in chat. And over on YouTube you will find a page that has playlists of all the books that I've read. There are Three books I've read that are not listed, they're unlisted, um, just because they actually are still within copyright. And if you, I'm allowed to have them up there if they are not listed publicly searchably, um, available or anything like that. If you want to, to um, listen to those ones, watch those ones, then I suggest what you do is you come over to the Discord server and ask me for those links and then I can make them available to you. That's the way to do it. <laughs> right, so regarding the um, copyright, I am part of a group of readers called the Codex Readers. Now, just above where it says story time here, uh, my hand can't go all the way up there, the camera disappears. Above where it says story time there, there's a logo that says Codex and then my screen name. Um, Codex is a group of awesome readers who read public domain books and ones that they have expressed permission for on Twitch and some of them also put them over onto YouTube. Now the Codex readers are part of a, are a group of readers specifically because we all read these books. Uh, we meet certain requirements like we don't read books that we shouldn't be reading online in a public place and we, unless we have specific permission obviously because I've just said that. Um, but uh, we have a Twitch team. That's our official readers in the Twitch team. Uh, that The first link that's over in the chat has that. That's available for you. Um, and you will see anyone who's currently live in the Twitch team. If you jo go to follow the second link to the Codex Discord server, you will find other people who also read um, books who are not specifically quite as focused as maybe the, the official Twitch team or whatever. You can get to know the various people who are the readers in there. 
friends and, and other people who chat together will often chat, chat about all sorts of nonsense. We also have a book club that usually gets together once a month, depending on who's organising and how well, how well organised they are. And we will discuss a book. If it's like last time we did, where it's a book that the book is still within copyright, we won't read it on our own streams. We read it in our own time for ourselves, but we will discuss it on stream together as a group. And we will often stream, each of us will stream that discussion as well. But also within Codex, there is a section of Codex, the security channel, which is fantastic if you're a streamer or if you're a moderator for someone who's a streamer. It, GoRiki has written up a whole lot of information about how you identify when a user is actually a bot, not a real person, why bots are bad. There are some bots that are good. They are ones which are used for actually helping with auto moderating and auto functions within your stream those are authorized they're okay for being there but there are other ones that aren't they steal people's information they are eligible for gifted subs which means that real people are missing out on those gifted subs they will even spam some of the bots are created in a way to spam um, and when you first start looking at what bots might be sitting in your channel or the channel that you're moderating, it can seem overwhelming because there are so many of them and you feel like it's a never ending job. And so some people just sort of throw up their hands and say, I can't be bothered. The reality is if you just keep picking away at it, keep reading through the information from time to time, refreshing your mind, it starts to make more and more sense. And then you start to put some of these actions into place and you end up with less and less and less and less bots that you're having to deal with. You'll also learn some really nifty tricks that can sometimes actually do a lot of the work for you. So it's really worth it. And you don't have to be interested in, in taking part in book club or anything to actually join the Codex Discord server even if you just want to join to find out about the security settings, go for it. Do that. Join. You're most welcome to be part of that. Uh, we would love to have you there, part of what's going on. So, right. The rest of my introduction for new people is, hi, I've got three tips for you. Three tips I have. Get, tip number one is get drinks, tip number two is get snacks, and tip number three is get comfortable. So get drinks. I always have water handy. Um, I try to make sure I drink plenty of water while I'm streaming because it helps my voice to keep going. I don't tend to cough quite as much if I drink plenty of water. But for anyone, even if you're not doing lots of talking, it keeps your brain and your body functioning well. So water. Have water handy. It's a benefit that I really like drinking water. It helps that our water is lovely, sweet rainwater instead of full of chemicals, town supply. My bonus drink for today is Charlie's Honest Cola. It's a New Zealand brand and they do, um, when I say honest, it's part of their slogan and it's made with real cola nuts. There you go. It has real malt real cola nuts, real awesome taste, and a cheeky squeeze of lemon. It also generally, with their products, they don't have lots of nasty ingredients. I'm just looking for their ingredient list. I've got one somewhere. I'm sure they've got one somewhere. It might be on the box. Right, here it is. Sparkling flavoured drink. Ingredients. Carbonated water. Natural cane sugar. No artificial sweetness here. Lemon juice. Barley malt extract. Natural flavours. Apple cider vinegar. Just helps with the right sort of zing. Um, it's low down on the list. It does actually have a sweetener, but the sweetener is stevia, which is another natural one. Um, and cola nut extract. So there you go. It's a nice, relatively safe cola drink and no it's not cold cold um, it's from our storage space which means it's cool cold much more comfortable and easier to drink so, so that's get drinks get snacks the snacks we have today I'm sure I've got people who come along just to find out what my snacks are in my treat jar and yeah that is my um, um, coffee tips QR code if anyone wanted to use it and if you didn't get that in time and you do want to act on that, let me know and I'll hold it up again for you. Otherwise, there you go. It's coffee with a hyphen in the middle 
facebook.com forward slash jevnz and jev my screen name always has three v's i don't write it any other way if you come across someone pretending to be me and they've not got three v's in their name it's not me right so what do we have in here we have my finnish licorice it's very yum it's not silly sweet but it does get stuck in your teeth because it's kind of once you start chewing it's a bit gooey we also have some new zealand griffin ginger nuts nice and crunchy new zealand ginger nuts are not quite the same as ginger thins ginger thins are crisp but they're not hard ginger nuts are dunking biscuits so if you've got a tea or coffee it's not uncommon for people to dunk them them in there until they soften slightly and then eat them don't leave them too long otherwise they fall off and you get goo in the bottom of your cup but if you've got good teeth and don't use these ones but you use the chewing ones to bite with then you can eat them as they are they're not super super hard they're just hard anyway hi coleslaw great to have you here and i missed out on seeing your redemption the other week um the other day not the other week i think it must have gone up just as i was focusing on on going over to see somebody and it was bend and stretch i remember so here you go here's your bend and stretch redemption so i'm gonna stretch and bend the other way and come back again to loosen up the spine which is one of those things which happens when you're sitting too long is you actually your muscles just tighten up the way they are and it's not very good for your circulation or your muscles or, or your brain or anything else so there you go <laughs> so right um I'm glad I was able to catch you while you were here because I was looking for you last time and I didn't see you in, in chat. I wanted to do the redemption for you since I had missed it previously, but we're all good to go. Right. That sounds terrible. Good to go. <laughs> Just one of those phrases that gets used, used and used and used and used, especially I think it's from military background. <sighs> anyway, enough of that. You're most welcome. Right, we do have regulars who join in with chat here. If you are wondering who I'm talking to, Coleslaw is one of our regulars. There are other regulars we have too. Um, so Coleslaw says, I just got my bivalent shot yesterday, so needing to stretch too. Yeah, good idea, good idea. Make sure you have plenty to drink as well. It helps your body to process the things that it's had to have put into it um, along the way. I was going to have a quick look here and see if we can figure out how many stories. Oh, there's heaps of stories in this book. Um, oh, that's notes and references. Sorry, not quite as bad as I thought it was. That was notes and references on the different stories. Phew. Great big long list there. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44 there's 44 in this book now uh, i'm trying to remember where we got up to because there are a couple where i i jumped forward in the book uh when i was doing the pre-halloween reads so uh some of the the titles are familiar but they're not actually ones i've read read yet for context because i was thinking through whether i was going to read them then at the time uh, so I've given you two tips, haven't I? I've given you drinks and I've given you snacks. And I'm going to suggest that you quickly go off and get yourself drinks and snacks if you haven't already. Because the third tip is a really easy one. Get comfortable. You can do that when you get back. Bring yourself a cushion or something nice to sit on or a blanket to sit under or something like that. Because when you're listening to a story, it's nice to be comfortable. That's what drinks and snacks help out with too. So quick run off go to the loo get your drinks get your snacks if you hadn't already and then come back so we can carry on with the story and i'll just see where i got to here just 
Sorry, I'm just trying to... Jack and his golden snuff box. Jack seems to have been a very popular name in fairy tales. I'm not quite sure why. So it looks like we're about a third of the way through the book. It's a little bit hard for me to do maths on the fly, so I'm not going to try. But it's really interesting because there's a lot of the stories which are familiar to me as traditional fairy tales, where the titles here seem familiar. Not all of them, but just a few. Um, it would be all amu it would be amusing if it was all the same Jack. Gosh, she's got up to some mischief. I was ex thinking exactly that. It's like Jack. Jack did this, and Jack did that, and Jack went and did something rather else, and it was like, wow, what didn't he do? Sometimes he's bright, and sometimes he's a bit not so bright. <laughs> How did he survive that last incident to be able to do this? Whatever. <laughs> that wasn't that close call. It wouldn't be good for his adrenaline, <laughs> adrenal system, all the sudden excitement happening all the time. Anyway. So there's a lot of ones here that are familiar. So we've got, this one is going to be Jack and his golden snuff box. We've got the story of the three bears. Did you know that was an English tradition? I always thought it was one of the Brothers Grimm stories. We've got Jack the Giant Killer, another one with Jack. We've got Henny Penny, that one I was certain was English. It just has this Englishness about it. I don't know if it actually is traditionally English or if it's one of those ones that's come from overseas into England. So Child Roland, Molly Whuppie, which is one of the ones we had before Halloween, Molly Whuppie. I remember saying that it was one that I had grown up listening to on the radio on Sunday mornings. The radio used to have children's stories so that parents could sleep in for a little bit longer on a Sunday morning and used to get up and, and turn the radio on and have a listen. So Molly Whoppy was one of those ones. And I know now, as an adult, that what the, the radio station used to have these records which had the different stories on, and it was just like, there wasn't a huge selection. There was things like um, the, 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 was, the old woman, it was an old woman who swallowed a fly. I'm pretty sure that was one of the ones on their system. Hi, Rich Gayant and viewers. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. I didn't, for some reason, I don't know why, but I didn't click that you streamed. Oh, I'm so sorry. That timed out. Um, I'll put that up on screen, shall I? Is that going to go on screen? There. There it is. There's your comment. There. Even if I can't actually show it in the in the um, chat, <laughs> um, 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 no, I don't want you to time out. I'm going to untime out. Did that untime out you? I think so. Untime out. I clicked it again. I don't know, but it's not going to restore the comment. Yeah, you're able to talk again, so that's okay. <laughs> But at least this way you get to see the comment. We get to see the comment. Thank you for coming in. And I don't know why, for some reason, I never twigged to the fact that you're actually a, a, a fellow streamer. So for those who... <laughs> I should have. I mean, I do look at who, who I interact with regularly, but sometimes it's like it goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah. So... And I'm really hoping that capitals are not required. Yay. Good. There you go. So there's a shout out for everybody else who who doesn't realize, like me, that Rich Gayant does a bit of streaming as well. Um, has just been enjoying Apex Legends, apparently, if if you had remembered to change your game um, setting. <laughs> I don't always remember because usually all I do is reading fun. Anyway, so <laughs> it's great to have you here. Great to have you here and your friends. That's fabulous. Thank you for coming. Um, I was going to say something else to you as well about that, and I can't remember what it was. So one of the additional things that I do is I keep an eye on who is in my chat or who are the users in my channel. This is just for people who are streamers or moderators. It's a good way to just make sure that your community stays a safe place for other people. So 
up in the uh, above the chat box in the far right hand side of your screen if you're watching on Twitch. It says stream chat above where you type your chat and then it's got what look like two peg heads which are actually meant to be people. Um, and if you it's actually a button that says users in chat so if you click on that it will sh show you who is currently in your chat on your channel and also you can refresh that list without having to refresh the whole page so the easiest way to do it so you can check up on on what's going on without feeling under pressure is you copy that list select all copy paste it into a text document and you can look at it later and if there is any user in chat that you are not happy with being there or you've checked and you know that they're a bot because they will sit in chat um, then you can ban them ban them first before you block them because ban means that they can't actually interact with chat block means they can't interact with you personally and that's the best sequence to do it in so there you go that's your extra bit of information for now I was going to get you guys a jigsaw puzzle before I got started today and I didn't Oh, that's pretty. We'll do that one. <laughs> that's a good way to choose, isn't it? So I'm going to get this set up and then I will get reading because you've had enough time to go off and do your getting snacks and drinks. There we go. Okay to that. And then I go turn it on and interact. And interact means I will do settings here for you. Uh, yeah, I'll leave that at 120, I think. Because it's got lots of bright blue up the top. Could do a bit more. 128, that'll do. I won't go 153, that's a huge jump. So I'm going to give you a link in just a moment. And then that will be available for anyone who wants to do the puzzle. It will open in another browser window. I don't know what happens if you're doing this on mobile. I think it opens up your browser if you're watching using the Twitch app. But I'm not certain. Because a lot of these things I don't do on mobile device. I do them on my computer. So I'm going to put this into my commands so that you can call up the command for it in the chat. And it will be the right one when I give you the thumbs up. And there you go, the jigsaw puzzle is good. Ready to go. Good to go. Shall we use that phrase again? Right, if you want to do the jigsaw puzzle, you type into chat exclamation mark jigsaw or exclamation mark puzzle or excla exclamation mark PZ, short for puzzle. And that will bring up for you the link to be able to do the jigsaw puzzle. And you will see it here, but you'll be doing it in your browser. So everyone else has something to keep, their, to keep their eyes busy while I'm reading. I'll just move that so it's a little bit not, not behind my hair all the time, I suppose. Anyway, something like that. We'll carry on. <laughs> right. So we've got drinks, we've got snacks, and we've got comfortable. So it's time to read, isn't it? Here we go. Whoops, need to get back on the page. I should probably also open up my drink as well. Yep. Let's let's trade thumbs up. <laughs> and thankfully, I remembered to turn on chat today, didn't I? We're doing well. <laughs> mm, yum. That's good. I like that. Right. Here we go. Jack and his golden snuff box. Once upon a time, and a very good time it was, though it was neither in my time, nor in your time, nor in anyone else's time. In other words, it's a legend. There was an old man and an old woman, and they had one son, and they lived in a great forest. Forests seem to be important to stories. Oh, yeah, I should have said that before. I'm just watching myself in there, and it's distracting me. Um... For those of you who are new, I have ADHD and I'm also autistic. So what that means is the autism turns up, for me, turns up my um, sensory awareness. 
I always have some part of me that's itchy. It's not a rash. It's nothing medically wrong. It's just that my my nerves are very aware of things. So that means that I will, sorry, that is, this is genuine. I will rub my nose. I will rub my ears. I will scratch myself, that sort of thing. I will, I will address itches as they come up. <laughs> coleslaw I'm sure you spend all your points every time I I shall do I shall just explain about the ADHD and the autism and then I will redeem that for you okay is that all right or would you rather I did that first she always spends points that's good because otherwise they're just sitting there doing nothing but I think sometimes I think poor coleslaw she spent all her points already so she can't do anything bigger <laughs> Okay, that's cool. I'll just explain about the ADHD and autism. So what happens is my nerves are set to about 11 when most people, there's their maximum is, is 10 and they function down at about 3 or 4. If it's a, a strong day, it will be 5, 6, maybe even 7. Anyway, so what that means is that I will be aware of somewhere being itchy. Now, most of the time I ignore most of those itches, the itchiness. But every now and then I'll get an itch that I really have to do something about. And if I don't do something about it, I will not be able to think clearly. I will not be able to string my words together into a, a, a comprehensible sentence. And so what I'll do is I will. I will rub my nose. I will itch my ear, whatever. I'm not being rude. I am as polite as I possibly can be. But I cannot not do those things. Otherwise, I would not be streaming. Some days it's worse than others. It's just one of those things. And I'm quite happy to do it in front of you because it's good for people to realize that there are different ways people's brain function and for us to be generous and accepting of the way they live and the way life hands itself to them and what they have to cope with. So if you get used to me having to, to address something that's itchy, it may help you to accept somebody at your workplace who ha may have something similar going on that you just never realized before. Be gracious to one another. So that's that. The other side of, of, of it is I, a, attention deficit. So we used to joke about it in our family. I have ADOS, attention deficit. Oh, shiny, total distraction. Um, and so that happens. I will explain about something and then the autism will kick in and I will get into lots and lots and lots and lots of detail that we don't necessarily need. So that's that for you to know. Um, yeah, neurodiverse, definitely, but lots of fun and enjoying it. <laughs> and I don't wish to be cured because it is not something that needs fixing. <laughs> Scratches love company will scratch with you. Good on you. That's the way. Right. I'll try not to do it too much, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> but just, yeah, I'm not being rude. It's just one of those things that has to be dealt with. Otherwise, it doesn't work. That's also why you'll see me resetting my glasses because they're irritating where they, they sit on my nose or they don't feel quite right. All that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's get on with the story, shall we? After I've redeemed the ears, let's get on with this. We will find the picker. We will turn the picker on. Turn on the interact for that. Oh, did you notice? There are some more. I can't actually add more than a certain number of colors. But the more colors we, the more items we have to list, the more colors will be doubled up. So here we go. We're going to spin the wheel and see which headband I get to wear which is going to be this time. We have got bats. We've got the bats. Hang on, they're in here. I know where they are. I've got the box. Oh, sorry about that. Whacked the um, um, microphone. Hope that wasn't too loud for you. So any suggestions on how I am going to eventually cover this box so that it doesn't look like Novo branded shoes? Whatever they look like, I don't know. It's just a box I was given because it had something else in it. Um, so if you've got any suggestions on how I can decorate that box to make it a little bit more interesting, appropriate, different, whatever, let me know in the chat or over in our Discord server. And I figured out something after stream last time. You know how I said that this, I, I end up too high for the camera? Even if I pull the picture down, you can't see the top of these. That's because I've got the cushion. 
The silly thing is, all I need to do is remove the cushion. There, sorted. And now I fit on the screen. Here's the bats. Here's the little bats. See? Right, with their um, googly eyes. And I'll get this one out of your way. Um, yeah, and it removes that listing from there. So we don't actually double up in, in any one stream. I, I will not be doubling up unless someone specifically picks the item again. And that is a different redemption. There you go. So I've now got six minutes of wearing this, whatever it is I'm doing, and we'll carry on. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> how did that happen? And, oh, it's all the capitals. Sorry, Aunt. Um, for some reason, I just need to find you on my listing so I can, un once again, un <laughs> untime you out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's part of my anti... <laughs> my anti-spam setup is if you do all caps, um, it will time you out. But it does mean that you didn't get to see the redemption of the another... Ears, uh, this one is ears to you, which is where what I do is I end up having to wear the one that they pick. So, are you? I'm going to let you two battle it out. I don't have a precedent for this. I'm go oh good the redemption listing. I'm going to let you battle it out between Rich Gay Aunt and Coleslaw as to whether or not I have to change it and remove it and Coleslaw has lost the redemption, or it's done sequentially, or as Aunt has actually said, two at once. Oh my goodness, that might be a, okay, if you two are happy with that, um, I will bring up the picker just because it will show you what else I've got. Here we go. Can you read that? I will read it out loud to you. I'm not going to wave them all at you. <laughs> and yes, I am going to wear two sets of ears at the same time. Pink unicorn. Oh, goodness me. What is it about the pink unicorn that people seem to like? <laughs> I'm checking to make sure that this is the one you mean. Okay, this one. Is that the one you meant? The sparkly one? Yes, says Rich Gart. <laughs> okay, I'll put this one on as well. Am I going to be able to put it before or after? Does that work or shall I put it behind the bats and bring it forward? <laughs> they go ugh, they go well together. I'll just push it forward a little bit. There you go. How's that? I've put it behind so you can kind of see the purple fluff of the bats as well. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's a bit of a laugh. I shall restart this timer and Coleslaw gets a um, a bonus few couple of minutes in there because I've got them both on. <laughs> I never quite know what's going to happen each time we're here. But that's part of the fun of it, isn't it? <laughs> All right, how about we read? <laughs> oh, I need to actually mark that off that I've done that one. I've got a, uh, I finally found that Goreki had been telling me that, you know, you need to have it where you can see when someone has done a redemption, because usually I just see it in amongst the chat comments. And um, then I found that there's a little thing that this, you can do it as a pop out. No, there's a little thing where it'll give you a notification in your streaming software, but you can pop it out and then put it into your uh, stream manager layout. <laughs> Hi Squibble, great to have you here. And you're here in time before I've actually finished. Yay, excellent. Good to see you. Um, and so I just need to remember because in that little panel, it will show me that someone's done a redemption and it will let me actually mark off when I have fulfilled that redemption. So there you go. It helps me to keep, <laughs> yes, got tea and toast too. You remembered tips one and two. Well done, ready to go. <laughs> Good on you, that's the way. So, here we go. I'm trying to figure out where I got up to mentally. No, I probably shouldn't try and figure out where I got up to mentally. Oh, my goodness. Aunt, wow. I'm blown away. <laughs> 
thank you so much that is that is lovely that is beautiful so aunt, if anyone hasn't seen it rich gay aunt has just gifted five subs thank you so much I really do appreciate it. And I hope that everyone who's here also appreciates it. I'm going to have to notify some of the others who may or may not be here right at the moment. I don't know if they are or not. Um, <laughs> even Goriki got a resub through being gifted a sub. Oh, that's sweet. That is so lovely. Thank you so much. Um, I tell you what, once I've finished my time on this, once I've finished my time on this, uh, you get to choose a bonus set, of he a bonus headband. Now, I'm not going to wear it at the same time as the other ones I've currently got on. I'm sorry. It's just like, this is like, I'm running out of room on my head. I feel like it's going to pop off. <laughs> because the pink, the pink one's the one that's got the wide band. And so it grips a little bit harder. And it feels kind of like it's going to slip off the back. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see how we go. Oh my. Wow. <laughs> they say you remember certain firsts when you're streaming. That that's that's one of them for me. Thank you so much. Uh, so we've got Bojma, uh, Suraf, Goriki, Lemon, and Shelf Date have all received a gifted sub. Thank you so much, Go Rich Gaya. That is lovely. It really is very kind. <sighs> that's made my day. <laughs> among other things that make my day. <laughs> some of them are small and some of them are quite significant. And it's one of the things I've learned to basically rock it uh, for my own mental health is when something delights me, even if I think it's nonsense to anybody else, is to actually appreciate it, to enjoy it, to make the most of it even if it's something really, really small. That's what started me with the whole thing of not just making it as a tip, having a, um, a bonus drink with me of some sort, because it reminds me that this is something that I enjoy. And the more you remind yourself that you are enjoying something that is special to you, even if it's a small thing, the more it um, enhances what's going on with your endorphins. And I don't get as depressed as I used to. It helps. It does in the long run. Just look for those little things. The same as looking for uh, funny memes or jokes. Even if they're, I used to be on a, uh, an email list that was the good clean funnies list and they would email out a clean joke, clean funny every day before the days of a lot of the other um, forum type stuff that we do now. But anything like that and I found sometimes I would breathe and it's like that's not particularly funny, but I'd go back later on in the day and I'd read that one or no, I'd read some other ones and then I'd come back to that one. And because I'd started getting my head space into looking at the humor in it, it meant that when I read that one again, it was so much funnier, so much funnier. And you do, it's, it's like when you get the giggles, usually it's because there's been a process building up that get you into that state of being in the, getting the giggles. It's wonderful. Enjoying nonsense is the best. Absolutely. It is. Enjoying nonsense is good for your health. So I'm going to carry on. And when we've finished the timer there, Rich Gay Aunt gets to choose a bonus different headphone, to, uh, headphone um, headband to wear, ears to wear, instead of these two. Right, Jack and his golden snuff box. This famous Jack fella. Maybe we should start some illustration that has various aspects of fairy tale Jack in it. <laughs> that would be quite funny. Right, so there was an old man and an old woman and they had one son and they lived in a great forest. You helped me get through COVID and a lot of weird life stuff and your stream's grown so well. Happy to be in a place I can give now. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I, I'll just turn that off because it's making a noise for you guys, even though it's not for me. Sorry about that. Right, here we go. I'll take that one off. Those two off, sorry, not that one. Put them over here. Have you had a think about what other headband you would prefer me to be wearing now? Oh, again, again, again. <laughs> I do see what you're saying. I shall deal with that in just a moment. I'm just going to untime out. Okay. 
Right. Jim Cat. Okay. <laughs> it's a great way to actually see what ones we've got without me having to spend ages digging through the box and waving them at everybody. Where is it? Jim Cat. Mouse ears. Oh, there it is. Didn't think they were anywhere else this time. They're on the shelf behind me or in this box. And I really do need to cover it. I like the black of it. I just think that having a brand name on it is not relevant and all this stuff. So I think I will cover it with something. But make it so that it's a little bit more fun. <laughs> Whispers, Jim Cat, Jim Cat. We burma shave, we whisper, all sorts of things around here, just to keep it, keep it fun. There you go, gem cat. I like, for, for the way it's done, I particularly like this one. I'm just going to see if I can get it so you can see them. So they're actually those little wee sparkly gems. Whoop, that way, those ones are easier to see. And they do, they ca in normal daylight, they do catch the light. So if you want, just for the fun of it, not that you're going to see it, but just knowing it, um, next time I actually go into the supermarket, I'll wear a set of ears for you. Just, just that, I'm trying to get it so you can actually see it beyond. Ah, beyond my hair. There, how's that? <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I did realise just before that if, even if something is um, timed out, I still have access to showing it on screen, <laughs> which is quite cool. Um, just because this is one of the, one of the gadgets that I've, I use. Right, shall we get past the first page? And yes, that's another one of those words that I say a lot. Right. Um, right. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Here we go. <laughs> Did it again. <laughs> it's like having a, maybe, it's a little, I, I'm, I'm reminded of the fact that some people who play first person shooters have death counters in their games. And I, I'm almost, almost tempted to have an um counter and a right counter. <laughs> Doesn't count when it's in the story, okay? <laughs> Here we go. And their son never saw any other people in his life. I'm not even going to read the same sentence again that I had before. He never saw any other people in his life, but he knew that there were some more in the world besides his own father and mother because he had lots of books and he used to read them every day. And he used to read all about other people. And when he read about some pretty young women, he used to go mad to see some of them. Till one day when his father was out cutting wood, he told his mother that he wished to go away to look for his living in some other country. Methinks there's an ulterior motive there. Not just looking for his living. Wished to look for his living in some other country and to see some other people besides them too. And he said, I see nothing at all here but great trees around me. And if I stay here, maybe I shall go mad before I see anything. Oh dear, where's this one going to go? Um, <laughs> there was something I was going to say. That's why I said that. It was a way of making me stop and think trying to think what it was oh dear oh dear oh dear oh dear <laughs> I'm so glad I amused myself I'm sorry about the, the I'm sorry if the rest of you are not amused by my antics but hey whatever I'll just get rid of that one don't need that one um <laughs> I am gonna put the egg timer on I've had it on for a while, so you've got a bonus out of that one. So, yeah, he, he reads books too, but I think there's something else going on in his mind because every time he reads about a pretty young woman somewhere else, he's like, oh, I want to see what these are like. I've heard of them. Oh, dear. We'll see. He said, I see nothing at all here but great trees around me, and if I stay here, maybe I should go ma shall go mad before I see anything. The young man's father was out all this time while this talk was going on between him and his poor old mother. 
the old woman begins by saying to her son before leaving, before he leaves, Well, well, my poor boy, if you want to go, it's better for you to go, and God be with you, the old woman thought, for the best, when she said that. But stop a bit before you go. Which would you like best for me to make you, a little cake and bless you, or a big cake and curse you? Dear, dear, said he, make me a big cake. Maybe I shall be hungry on the road. The old woman made the big cake and she went on top of the house and she cursed him as far as she could see him. Ouch. That's what I was going to say. The author specifically tried to write it so that the stories felt like they were still spoken stories, which is why the phrasing is sometimes a little bit different to what you would expect in a written story. Definitely less formal. He presently meets with his father and the old man says to him, Where are you going, my poor boy? When, his, when the son told the father the same tale as he told his mother. Well, said his father, I'm sorry to see you going away, but if you've made your mind to go, it's better for you to go. The poor lad had not gone far when his father called him back. Then the old man drew out of his pocket a golden snuff box and said to him, Here, take this little box and put it in your pocket, and be sure not to open it till you are near your death. And away went poor Jack upon his road, and walked till he was tired and hungry, for he had eaten all his cake upon the road. As you do, you know, when you've got a pocket full of cake, you eat it. Especially if you're a little bit bored, or a bit nervous, like you're doing something you've not done before. Excuse me. He had eaten all his cake upon the road, and by this time night was upon him, so he could hardly see his way before him. He could see some light a long way before him, and he made up to it, went towards it, excuse me. Very itchy, but, you know, blow nose type itchy. Carrying on. He could see some light a long way before him, and he made up to it and found the back door and knocked at it till one of the maidservants came and asked him what he wanted. He said that night was on him, and he wanted to get some place to sleep. The maidservant called him in to the fire and gave him plenty to eat, good meat and bread and beer because that was the done thing to drink beer, I suppose. And as he was eating his food by the fire, there came the young lady to look at him, and she loved him well, and he loved her. And the young lady ran to tell her father and said there was a pretty young man in the back kitchen. And immediately the gentleman came to him and questioned him and asked what work he could do. Jack said, the silly fellow, that he could do anything. He meant that he could do any foolish bit of work that would be wanted around the house doesn't realise that people take you literally, because he doesn't have life experience. Well, says the gentleman to him, if you can do anything, at eight o'clock in the morning, I must have a great lake and some of the largest man-o-war vessels sitting before my mansion, and one of the largest vessels must fire a royal salute, and the last round must break the leg of the bed where my young daughter is sleeping. And if you don't do that, you will have to forfeit your life. All right said Jack, and away he went to his bed and said his prayers quietly and slept till it was near eight o'clock, and he had hardly any time to think what he had, could do, till all of a sudden he remembered about the little golden box that his father gave him, and he said to himself, well, well, I never was so near my death as I am now, and he felt in his pocket and drew the little box out, and when he opened it out, there hopped three little red men and asked him, what is your will with us? Well, said Jack, I want a great lake and some of the largest man-o-war vessels in the world before this mansion, and one of the largest vessels to fire a royal salute in the last round to break one of the legs of the bed where this young lady is sleeping. All right, said the little red men. Go to sleep. Jack had hardly time to bring the words out of his mouth to tell the little men what to do, but what it struck eight o'clock when bang, bang, went one of the largest man-o-war vessels... Man of war vessel is a um, a ship used by a navy when you're at war with another country. Just in case you were wondering, 
And it made Jack jump out of bed to look through the window, and I can assure you it was a wonderful sight for him to see, after being so long with his father and mother living in a wood. I'm waiting for the picture. There we go, yay, that's beautiful, isn't it? I love the colours in that one. I think it's lovely. I'm just going to find the, oh, and the time has gone off. Goodness me. Right, we'll put those over there. I know where they are now. I can find them very quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to find the overlay thing for the jigsaw. Interact. Oh, it disappeared, that's why. Zanse Schans in the Netherlands. I think it's Schans. I'm not sure. I'll see if I can find out where that is, just because it intrigues me. And I'll take that one away, so you can still see the picture. It's a unique part of the Netherlands, full of wooden houses, mills, barns and workshops. And I shall just have a quick look on the map, just because I can't help it, I have to know... Oh, there's a museum there too. This bridge is probably part of the whole complex there. Oh, it's northwest of Amsterdam. Okay, right. So if you're looking for it, it's... Hang on. Z-A-A-N-S-E-S-C-H-A-N-S. -S -S, if you want to look it up. Anyway, just randomly thought you might want that. <laughs> Let's find you another picture to do. And then I shall, oh, that one's might be a little bit awkward. I like it. No, I'm going to do that one. Sorry. You get to put up with it. Copy. Go up here to Jigsaw and we go Properties. Paste. Okay, and then we go over here to look at how many pieces. I'm going to be mean. I make it 140 pieces. Look at all those bits of green in there. You okay with 140 pieces? I'll give you a moment. If I have no argument with the 140 pieces, then that's what we're going to be doing. What it was originally showing was 102. Okay, no, right, we're doing 140 pieces. And here's the, I'll copy the link, copy the link. And paste it into my command center. And then we'll carry on reading. There you go, it's ready to go for the jigsaw puzzle. Move that one down there out of my way. <clears throat> That's right. Cool. Carrying on. Here we go. Bang, bang, went one of the largest man-of-war vessels and it made Jack jump out of bed to look through the window and I can assure you it was a wonderful sight to see after being so long with his father and mother living in a wood. They wouldn't have had great big lakes and they definitely wouldn't have had warships. By this time Jack dressed himself and said his prayers and came down laughing for he was proud, he was, because the thing was done so well. The gentleman comes to him and says to him, Well, my young man, I must say that you are very clever indeed. Come and have some breakfast. And the gentleman tells him, Now there are two more things you have to do. And then you shall have my daughter in marriage. Did he say that before or not? That, that he, straight away that he could have the daughter in marriage. Just scrolling back a little bit. No, the first one was do this, and if you don't do it, you have to forfeit your life. Okay, so now he's saying there are two more things to do, and if you don't, you will forfeit your um, 
you can have if you do them you can have my daughter's hand in marriage now who knows what a snuff box is do you know what a snuff box is and I'm not talking about a TV series called snuff box no I don't want a picture of a hand supposedly the little um, in here you can sometimes get a little bit of a hollow forms if you've got skinny hands. I don't. Um, in here, which was referred to, I uh, try and get it so it's a little bit more light. See that little hollow there? That was the natural snuff boxes. Anyway, so snuff was tobacco combined with some other things, um, some of which were considered to be the equivalent of snorting other substances that we know of these days and you would carry around a little box to store said snuff in I'll take away the word hand and it might give me a better selection of pictures mightn't it no it's still giving it to me but not so badly I'm just trying to see if I can find you a nice selection of snuff boxes so you can see more than one at once. These ones will do. Okay, save that and then I'll show them to you. Now, the reason I know what snuff boxes are is because when we used to go down to our big museum in Auckland, the main museum that is nearest to, to where we live, not our local museum, which is more to do with local history specifically. Wood, working with wood like felling cowrie trees and how they used to transport things and all that sort of stuff. That's the local one. So the one down in Auckland has the War Memorial section in the top. It's actually referred to as the War Memorial Museum. And also it has, sorry, I'm trying to find the right pla place to put this so I can call it pull the image up and there used to be a section where they had a whole lot of historic items and there was one cabinet one it was it was a cabinet that was about this wide and it was the the height of all of their other glass sided cabinets so it was quite a, and it had shelves that were sort of a foot or two apart and each shelf would have an array of snuff boxes on it I wanted them. They were just so beautiful. And and snuff boxes are not big. They're, they're like little miniature, a little bit like a modern pill box where it's an ornamental style pill box, where it's just one box, one container that you have that you can flip the lid open to access what's inside it. So what I shall do is find for you this picture that I've now put in my computer. Oh, that's why I had my jigsaw puzzle in a different place. No, we'll swap them around. Jigsaw puzzle is going to move down here, which nobody's doing at the moment anyway. Picture and turn the picture on. It's not particularly bright, sorry. But these are snuff boxes. And so each box would have, you know, a portion of snuff in it. As I said, it was tobacco plus some other things. Let's see what they say about it. Actually, I can do it better. I can do you one better than that. Word. Let's see if it comes up before, uh, behind, or in front of this. In front, snuff, finely ground or pulverized tobacco, intended for use for by, by being sniffed or snorted into the nose. Now, I happen to know that they often would mix some other things in with the snuff. Uh. No, 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 that's not what I wanted you to look up for me, thank you. I wanted a little bit of extra information. I didn't see what else it said, and I don't need to because there's another context to do with snuff, which is to do with snuffing out, like snuffing out a candle. It's also used to refer to a particular type of despicable media production so they had chinese jade ones and all sorts of things uh sometimes the, the 
they'd pick up a little bit of snuff out of their box and hold it up and go to, to do it. So they're snorting it basically. Uh, let's see what it says. Come on, come on. Give us a little bit more information. Snuff is a smokeless tobacco because they're not actually going to, to heat it. Not going to burn it. Ground or pulverized from tobacco leaves, it's inhaled or sniffed into the nasal cavity, delivering a swift hit of nicotine and a lasting flavored scent, especially if flavoring has been blended into it. Traditionally, if sniffed or inhaled lightly after a pinch of snuff is either placed, on, placed onto the back surface of the hand or held pinched between thumb and index finger or held in a snuffing device, which would be like a little special spoon sort of thing. Um... Uh, let's see if it says anything else about extras added to it. T typical traditional flavours are varieties of blended tobacco leaves considered the original fine snuff without additional scents or essences. Varieties of spice, piquant, fruit, floral and mentholated snuff also followed the introduction of snuff as being something that was taken. Uh, each maroon manufacturer had their own variety. It's a little bit like roll your own cigarettes. You could, you buy your packet of tobacco, but you buy the variety of tobacco that you want because each manufacturer has their own blend in it to do with how long it's been dried, how it's been dried, etc., etc., and it changes the flavour. I mean, I know you can get that with normal cigarettes too, but there's a much narrower field with with tobacco when it comes in a pouch that way. Uh, so it's not telling me what extras are in there. I oh, like no, common flavours. Include coffee, chocolate, Bordeaux, which is a type of wine. Uh, honey, vanilla, cherry, orange, apricot, plum, camphor, cinnamon, rose and spearmint. Modern flavours also include bourbon, cola and whiskey. There you go, if you enjoy your smells and don't want to take your ca uh, nicotine through something that is heated. Not really my idea of fun, but I suppose it's somebody's. So that's the box. They are small boxes because they go in your little fob pocket in your waistcoat, your waistcoat, or in your dress coat. And so they're, they're a little box that fits in the palm of your hand and you just flip the lid open. You hold it and flip it open. And people would show them off to each other. They would have these beautiful ornamental ones. They were enameled or they were made out of precious stone or jade or anything else like that. Such a wide variety. So that's what they were and that's how they were used, kind of. Uh, let's move that out of the way and I'll carry on with reading the story. But I will also move the jigsaw puzzle back up a little higher for you. So those of you who are watching the jigsaw puzzle being done can see it. Oh, and that timer is still up there, which doesn't need to be. I'll get that one out of your way too. Right, carrying on. <sighs> Hello, cat. Cat's meowing at me. No, I'm not going down to deal with that at the moment. <sighs> so he said... Now there are two more things you have to do and then you can have my daughter in marriage. I'll do more of this. Give her away as a gift. Thank you very much, Dad. Jack gets his breakfast and has a good squint at the young lady and also she at him. Yay. The other thing that the gentleman told him to do was to fell all the great trees for miles around. Why would you do that to your nice trees? There must be some reason. Sorry, I really am going to have to go and check on what's going on with the cat. I'm just going to turn my mic off for a minute so you don't hear me puff, thumping and puffing up and down the stairs. I shall be back. I shall just go.
there's a particular cry that the cat gives that's quite sad and pathetic. And when he does that, it usually means that either he's got a furball and he's in pain, or he desperately needs to go to the loo. So it's like, well, when he's like that, let him out if you can. We do have a litter tray for him, but we've had bad weather for two days, a day and a half, two days. So he hasn't really been outside. So, yeah, good on him for asking. Right. Catch my breath after the stairs. And then carry on with the story. So Jack gets his breakfast and has a good squint at the young lady and also she at him. Blizzarding there. Oh my goodness. I do not envy you. Mind you, your, your accommodation is probably more suited to those sort of conditions than houses. We do not have that sort of heating and insulation that you would hopefully have where you are. The other thing that the gentleman told him to do was to fill all the great trees for miles around by eight o'clock in the morning again. And to make my long story short, it was done, and it pleased the gentleman well. The gentleman said to him, the other thing you have to do, and it was the last thing, you must get me a great castle standing on 12 golden pillars. And there must come regiments of soldiers and go through their drill. At eight o'clock, the commanding officer must say, Shoulder up! All right, said Jack, when the third and last morning came. The third great feat was finished, and he had the young daughter in marriage. But, oh dear, there was worse to come yet. The gentleman now makes a large hunting party and invites all the gentlemen round the country to it, and to see the castle as well. And by this time Jack has a beautiful horse and a scarlet dress to go with them, as in scarlet outfit. On that morning his valet, when putting Jack's clothes by, after changing them to go hunting, put his hand in one of Jack's waistcoat pockets and pulled out the little golden snuff box, as poor Jack left it behind in a mistake. And that man opened the little box and there hopped the three little red men out and asked him what he wanted with them. Well, said the valet to them, I want this castle to be moved from this place far and far across the sea. All right, said the little red men to him. Do you wish to go with it? Yes, said he. Well, get up, said they to him, and away they went far and far over the great sea. Now the grand hunting party comes back, and the castle upon the twelve golden pillars had disappeared, to the great disappointment of those gentlemen, as did not see it before, because not everybody actually came and visited the castle first. They went hunting first to come then to the castle. That poor silly Jack is threatened by taking his beautiful young wife from him, for taking them in the way he did, as in deceiving them. But the gentleman at last made an agreement with him, and he is to have a twelve months and a day to look for it, and off he goes with a good horse and money in his pocket. Now poor Jack goes in search of his missing castle over hills, dales, valleys and mountains, through woolly woods and sheep walks, further than I can tell you or ever intend to tell you, until at last he comes up to the place where lives the king of all the little mice in the world. There was one of the little mice on sentry at the front gate going up to the palace and did try to stop Jack from going in. He asked the little mouse, where does the king live? I should like to see him. This one sent another with him to show him the place. And when the king saw him, he called him in. Then the king questioned him and asked him what he was do where he was going that way. Well, Jack told him the truth. And that he had lost the great castle and was going to look for it. And he had a whole twelve months and a day to find it out. And Jack asked him whether he knew anything about it. And the king said, no. But I am the king of all the little mice in the world, and I will call them all up in the morning, and maybe they have seen something of it. Mmm, mice know lots of things. They get places that people don't think of. Then Jack got a good meal in bed, and in the morning he and the king went on to the fields, and the king called all the mice together and asked them whether they had seen the great beautiful castle standing on golden pillars. And all the little mice said, no, there was none of them had seen it. The old king said to him that he had two other brothers, one is the king of all the frogs, and my other brother, who is the oldest, he is the king of all the birds in the world. And if you go there, maybe they know something about the missing castle. 
I have never heard this story before, have you? The king said to him, leave your horse here with me till you come back and take one of my best horses under you and give this cake to my brother. He will know then who you got, who you got it from. Mind and tell him I am well and should like dearly to see him. And then the king and Jack shook hands together. Mm. And when Jack was going through the gates, the little mouse asked him, should he go with him? And Jack said to him, no, I shall get myself into trouble with the king. And the little thing told him, maybe better for you to let me go with you. Maybe I shall do some good to you sometime without you knowing it. Jump up then. And the little mouse ran up the horse's leg and made it dance and Jack put the mouse in his pocket. For now, Jack, after wishing good morning to the king and pocketing the little mouse, which was on sentry, trudged on his way in such a long way he had to go, and this was his first day. At last he found the place, and there was one of the frogs on sentry and a gun upon his shoulder, and did try to hinder Jack from going in. But when Jack said to him that he wanted to see the king, he allowed him to pass, and Jack made up to the door. The king came out and asked him his business, and Jack told him all from beginning to end. Well, well, come in. He gets good entertainment that night, and in the morning the king made such a funny sound and collected all the frogs in the world. And he asked them, did they know or see anything of a castle that stood upon twelve golden pillars? And they all made a curious sound, and said no. Sorry, my attempt at... <laughs> frog croaking that's what our frogs in the pond and the reserve next to us sound like reserve being the park right yeah i'm enjoying it too it's just so different to any of the other ones i've i've heard before mind you there's a few odd ones jack had to take another horse and cake to this king's brother who is king of all the fowls of the air and as jack was going through the gates the little frog that was on sentry asked john should he go with him john being um, the, a formal version of jack jack is often a nickname for john in case you're wondering why he asked john if no stories about jack Jack refused him for a bit, but at last he told him to jump up, and Jack put him in his other waistcoat pocket, and away he went again on his great long journey. It was three times as long this time as it was the first day. However, he found the place, and there was a fine bird on sentry. And Jack passed him, and he never said a word to him, and he talked with the king, and told him everything all about the castle. Well, said the king to him, you shall know in the morning from my birds whether they know anything or not. Jack put up his horse in the stable and then went to bed after having something to eat. And when he got up in the morning, the king and he went on to some field, and there the king made some funny noise, and there came all the fowls that were in all the world, that's all the birds, and the king asked them, did, you see the did they see the fine castle? And all the birds answered, no. Well, said the king, where is the great bird? They had to wait then for a long time for the eagle to make his appearance. When at last he came in, all in a perspiration after sending two little birds high up on the sky to whistle on him to make all the haste he possibly could, the king asked the great bird, did he see the great castle? And the bird said, yes, I came from there where it is now. Yay, finally, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, just doing my proper streamer hosting, uh, host thing, uh, not host, um, housekeeping thing, making sure I've got all the information I need available in case there's anything else untoward, anything untoward going on. Right, carrying on. So he's seen it, yay! Yes, I came from, where it there, came from there where it is now. Well, says the king to him, this young gentleman has lost it. And you must go with him back to it, but stop till you get a bit of something to eat first. They killed a thief and spent the best part of it. No, they killed a thief and sent the best part of it to feed the eagle on his journey over the seas. That's what they do with thieves. Doesn't pay to be a thief in that king's country 
and had to carry Jack on his back, just as well as a giant eagle. Now when they came in sight of the castle, they did not know what to do to get the little golden box. Well, the little mouse said to them, leave me down, and put me down, and I will get the little box for you. So the mouse stole into the castle and got hold of the box, and when he was coming down the stairs, it fell down and he was very near being caught. He came running out with it, laughing his best. Have you got it? Jack said to him. He said yes, and off they went back again and left the castle behind. As they were all of them, Jack, Mouse, Frog and Eagle, passing over the great sea, they fell to quarrelling about which it was that got the little box, till down it slipped into the water. It was by then, looking at, by them looking at it and handing it from one hand to the other that they dropped the little box to the bottom of the sea. Well, well, said the frog, I knew that I would have, some, have to do something so that you'd better let me go down in the water. And they let him go. And he was down for three days and three nights and up he comes and shows his nose and little mouth out of the water and all of them asked him, did he get it? And he told them, no. Well, what are you doing here then? Nothing at all, he said. I only want my full breath. And the poor little frog went down the second time. And he was down for a day and a night and up he brings it. And away they did go after being there four days and nights and after a long tug over seas and mountains, arrive at the palace of the old king who is the master of all the birds in the world and the king is very proud to see them and was a hearty welcome and a long con has a hearty welcome and a long conversation jack opens the little box and told the little men to go back and bring the castle here to them and all of you make as much haste back again as you possibly can the three little men went off and when they came near the castle they were afraid to go to it till the gentleman and lady and all the servants were gone out to some dance. And there was no one left behind there, only the cook and another maid with her, and the little red men asked them, which would they rather, go or stop behind? And they both said, I will go with you. And the little men told them to run upstairs quick, and they were no sooner up and in one of the drawing rooms than here comes just in sight the gentleman and lady and all of the servants, but it was too late. Off the castle went, at full speed with the women laughing at them through the windows while they made motions for them to stop. That's the Lord and Lady who are down below. Oh, wonderful. There you go. There's the puzzle. Very good. Let's wait for it to give me the name. Glaumbeyer Museum in Northern Iceland. Glaumbeyer. Did you, you can see that it's got um, grass on the roof. That's one of the ways of building in Iceland, the old traditional buildings. And then this row here, these are more buildings where they've actually put turf on top and they have the grass growing. And it's a way for them to actually have um, a building that copes with weather, etc. But, and also the climate, the winter, the cold of winter. If you have your animals in a barn that's made in this manner with a turf roof with the grass over it, it's not going to get so cold inside it. Um, so that's good, isn't it? That's an awesome way to have a, a building. Let's see about doing one more puzzle and we'll carry on with the story. I don't know that we're actually going to end up with a, a craft session, but I, it was quite good to actually show you the pictures. This will be nice. Nice and bright. Right, here we go. Puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. Find the right thing so I can do it. Now, if anyone comes into chat and is wanting to know about things like uh, a Discord server or anything like that and you think that they're going to be interested in being involved with just being part of the community, not that we do lots, but hey, whatever, um, you're most welcome to call up those different links that I usually use. Most of my links, my command links, are, are available for general use. They're not specific to me as streamer or to moderators. Hang on, I shall get you, put the link in here for you. Yes, that changed, so I did get the right link and the puzzle is ready to go for you. 
there so yeah you're most welcome to share the information such as YouTube my social media whatever they're all available in fact most if you want to know what they are and see which ones are moderator ones and which ones are general public ones if you type in exclamation mark commands it will actually give you the link to the stream elements page where I host my commands so you can see what there is available that you can use there's also quotes there's affirmations which is affirms there's what is that one I always forget that advice that was the other one that I was trying to think of the other day advice right carrying on reading mm -hmm. so the people on the ground had made motions to them to stop but all to no purpose they were nine days on their journey on their way back they were nine days on their journey in which they did try to keep the Sunday holy when one of the little men turned to be turned to be the priest took a turn I suppose to be the priest the other the clerk and the third presided at the organ and the women were the singers for they had a grand chapel in the castle already what uh, it's getting curiouser and curiouser very remarkable there was a discord made in the music and one of the little men ran up one of the organ pipes to see where the bad, bad sound came from and when he found out it only happened to be that the two women were laughing at the little red man stretching his little legs full length on the bass pipe and also his two arms the same time with his little red nightcap which he never forgot to wear and what they never witnessed before could not help calling forth some good merriment while on the face of the deep that, that just feels a little bit weird the statement there but okay whatever a discord was made yes we have a discord <laughs> um, though they were not going on with what they begun with they very near came to danger as the castle was once very near sinking in the middle of the sea so the castle's traveling it's by the magical skills of the three red men and these ladies are laughing at one of these little red men which is not really helping the well-being of the castle being carried to where it's got to go to at length after a merry journey they came again to jack and the king the king was quite struck with the sight of the castle and going up the golden stairs went to see the inside the king was very much pleased with the castle but poor jack's time of a 12 months and a day was drawing to a close and he wishing to go home to his young wife gives orders to the three little men to get ready by the next morning at eight o'clock to be off to the next brother and to stop there for one night also to proceed from there to the last or the youngest brother the master of all the mice in the world in such place where the castle shall be left under his care until it is sent for jack takes a farewell of the king and thanks him very much for his hospitality away went jack and his castle again and stopped one night in that place and away they went again to the third place and there left the castle under his care as jack had to leave the castle behind he had to take to his own horse which he left there when he first started it's getting all rather convoluted really now poor jack leaves his castle behind and faces towards home and after having so much merriment with the three brothers every night jack became sleepy on horseback and would have lost the road if it was not for the little men are guiding him at last he arrived weary and tired and they did not seem to receive him with any kindness whatever because he had not found the stolen castle well as in he wasn't bringing it with him and to make it worse he was disappointed in not seeing his young and beautiful wife to come and meet him through not through being hindered by her parents but that did not stop long jack put full power on and dispatched the little men off to bring the castle from there and they soon got there jack shook hands with the king and returned many thanks for his kingly kindness in minding the castle for him and then jack instructed the little men to spur up and put speed on and off they went and were not long before they reached their journey's end when out comes the young wife to meet him with a fine lump of a young son and they all lived happy ever afterwards the end i bet you didn't think that was going to be the finish of the story <laughs>
<laughs> that is just odd. No more from his mother or his father or any of the strange things that they had said or predicted. Strange, 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 strange. We do have some very strange stories in English folklore. My goodness. Mm. So I'm just going to go and see if I did actually print a different sized um, Hello Kitty face on the printer around the corner. So stay there. No, I didn't. But... So this is where we got to so far when I was discussing it at the beginning of the stream. This is too small. So I've done a, oops, my hair's annoying me. I've done a bigger one, but this I think is too big. Even behind, looking at it behind me, it's kind of the right size, but that's a long way back. That's the perspective shift that you get, parallax error and all that sort of stuff. So putting these two together, there's a huge difference in size. I didn't realize it was going to be so different in size. Put it over there, one side rather than the other. Makes it easier to scale it. So that's like half as big again as what that is. This one is slightly smaller, as you can see. Well, quite a bit smaller, but it's only slightly bigger than this. Try and put that there. Is that much bigger enough? I don't think so. I think we need something that's between this size and this size. Between this one here and this one here. So let's have a look over here to where I've got the image. Oh, I've put it away. Let's go up here and see if I can call it up from things I've done re recently. There it is. Hello Kitty. Get that one out of the way. I can probably show it to you as an image. Or whatever. I don't know. Or s I can swap to the other screen. Here we go. And I need to pull up the jigsaw because we are doing the jigsaw, There's, there you go. So if I turn that round, you can see that this is what I'm talking about with the two different sizes. They are quite different from each other, and that's the in-between one, which is way too, I mean, there's not enough difference, I think, but this one is way too big. So I'll put it there so you can see it. I think the best thing to do is to have another go at printing it, control P, and I put that at 40% basically of its original size. So if I go for 0 0.6, no, not that side, 6, oh, numlock's gone, that's why. No, that sticks out past the edges. That's way too big now. Okay, we're not doing that one. We are going to go 0.5 instead. It's just a guessing game to see how well it fits the page. Okay, that's nearly touching the edge. That one's a little bit further. I'm going to go print and we'll see how that big, how big that one turns out to be. Printer. Yes, I can hear the printer. And you probably can't. You can see my book too, right here on my reading stand. Oh, no, I don't need to do that. Go away. So the next story will be, when we do it, if we carry on with the book, the, three, the story of the three bears. It's nowhere near as long as this last one. I'll just go and get that piece of paper. And we'll see how big this one is compared with the others. It's smaller than the really big one. Move that out of the way. 
that's smaller than the really big one. See? Try and get it straight for you. See the ears, the top of the ear here? They line up. But over here, this one's in further from the edge than that one. So now we shall put this one next to it. And it's bigger than this one. Let's compare. Does that look like it's a, enough of a change? Swap back to the other camera. Here we go. Swap back to the other camera. Got three bits of paper now. With Kitty on. This one's too small. This, one, this is like Goldilocks and the three bears. Oh, the three bears. One of them was a small wee, little small wee bear and one was a middle sized bear and the other was a great huge bear. <laughs> it kind of works, doesn't it? <laughs> so I think, let's hold this up. Is that going to be big enough? I think it's going to be big enough. I really think that that will be nearer to what we're after. The, I was just disappointed with how much bigger the other one. Maybe it's just too big. I think it's too big. Maybe I should try making this one into a hairband because it is bigger than this and see how much bigger it actually looks like in real life. That's probably the best thing to do, isn't it? I'll try this one and then I'll, if that one still looks too small, I'll try this one because we're still working with just paper. We're not wasting cardboard, except for that very first one I did. I think that's the way to do it. I can probably paste up Hello Kitty pictures all over the place now with all the ones that I don't use. So I'll just I'll start cutting. And we'll swap over back to the other screen and you can see me cutting. <laughs> just because, hey, we're all still here. And no, I'm not going to, to start reading the three bears. It doesn't say Goldilocks in the title. It just says the three bears. I wonder how different that story is going to be to what we're used to. <laughs> and I'm moving the, my microphone nearer to in front of me so I can put my hands around it. And hopefully my, um, my audio settings are such that it's going to stop it from causing any problems. Oh, we needed this, didn't we? This shape here was the cutout piece to fit it on. It definitely makes it stick up further than the other one did. So if I put that there, about there, that'll do. So if we trace around this, I'm not going to cut those bits, I'm just going to um, use those as a guideline for the general shape I'm going for. I'm glad I didn't throw that other bit away. Here we go. Uh, we did a bit. Right in front of me. <laughs> yep, Sanrio, that's the one. <laughs> nice to know people recognise you. She, um, I'm not too surprised that, that Kitty became really popular. Now I know that in Japan they've got TV series and all that sort of stuff. Yes, my scissors are making probably too much noise on the screen, but that's just the way it's going. Cutting out is easier if you don't have so much excess. And we're not saving the excess to be part of the image. Um, but the shape of the face reminds me very much of... Miffy, Miffy, the rabbit. Does anyone remember Miffy? I think it was Miffy. Hang on, I'm going to look her up. I'm pretty sure it was Miffy, not Muffy. Might have been Muffy. Coleslaw remembers. Miffy, it is Miffy. Similar sort of a look, but not quite so sure, so comfortable with herself was the effect. Miffy is cute too, but Hello Kitty is my favourite out of the two. Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of Miffy's face. 
uh, kind of the looks like I think one of the earlier ones, earlier versions. I'll show you. Created in 1955. Save image. Put it in the right place. Yay. And no, I haven't been out grocery shopping yet to be able to show you my jet planes, remember? Or other New Zealand lollies. I will do so though when I get that far. I'll just go back to the other screen because that's one where my picture handler is. Illustrations, picture other, browse. There she is, there's Miffy, open, oh, it's tiny, I knew that. And you're going to not see the jigsaw puzzle just for a minute, actually no, I'll move the jigsaw puzzle over here. Somewhere, okay, there, you can see the jigsaw puzzle kind of still going on, sorry about that. We'll make it available again properly later. So this is Miffy, see the, the same, the roundedness, the face being this round instead of this round because human faces are this round um, and the cute animal faces are this oval round sideways, just like you get for baby faces in illustrations. I watched my neighbor Totoro last night and the little sister in that one, she's got a more this round face and it's it's set into our brain programming that 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 sideways oval shaped face is for a more juvenile a younger character or person um so but miffy always looked a little bit sort of thing to me as a as a kid whereas kitty hello kitty um let's just swap screens again hello kitty looks more hmm sort of thing whatever but yeah i do think that that kitty is qu cuter they've probably put a lot more time into developing the the look because it's part of corporate design uh, designed by a corporation rather than one person who was the author and illustrator which is dick brunner who did miffy i think he did other ones too and i can't remember who they are does anyone else remember who they they were that dick brunner did without me looking them up I put away my little um, Hello Kitty coin purse. It was sitting on my desk from showing it to you the other day. I thought, that really needs to go in my bag because otherwise when I need it, I will not have it. And I need to redo the lining in it again so that it's not going to shred. The original was a super cheap kind of polyester that was very, very loosely woven so it, sh it pulled. Um, out of the seams and it shredded really really easily which is probably why it was so cheap in part and so I actually put some other fabric in instead because it makes it much easier for um, taking coins out if you don't have all this loose edges of the seams that are existing and also, um, it means that the actual fa main fabric of the purse itself, the coin purse itself, is going to last a lot longer because it, you're not exposing all those edges so that it shreds, so it frays. It's probably a knit fabric with the velvety edge. This is not very well cut. I'm wobbling all over the place. I don't know how you do it, Squibble. I really don't. At least... This is not a comparison with you now. At least I'm managing to keep it kind of in the middle of where you guys can see. I should probably zoom that camera picture in slightly so it's not quite so small. But my original thinking was that I have a tendency to spread things out and if I do that I'll probably forget to do what I'm doing where you can see it if I zoom it in too much. Come back over here. Cut this corner off. Years of practice cutting shrink plastic so it doesn't shatter as I was cutting. Yes, I would imagine that that would be quite a challenge. And I discovered shrink plastic quite late. Um, we were homeschooling and people would talk about making 
shrink things, shrinky dinks. And I'd never seen them, I'd never had anything like them before. Sorry, looking over the edge of my glasses so I can cut off this weird corner that's in there that I've left. Um, and finally getting a little shrinky dink kit somewhere and thinking this is really cool but the limitations it would be so good to be able to put your own little pictures on them and then shrink them and make them pop you know um, and then I found out that there's certain types of plastic that do it because it's an expanded plastic and when you heat it it shrinks back to the size it wants to be uh, things like that all sorts of stuff so that's size wise kind of what's going on let's let's swap screens again and we shall get rid of Miffy. No, not the jigsaw. Miffy. That's the one. And we shall put the jigsaw back over here. And that, I th I'm wondering if this is more like the sort of size that's going to work. What do you think? Should I go bigger than this? Without even trying to put it on a headband at the moment. Or is that size going to work? Obviously, anything outside of the black outline is going to be removed that way. I think that'll work. I may make it sit down slightly further and then actually apply a bow there. We'll see. So we won. And I'm trying to remember what size that was. Uh, no, I'm not worrying about the eyes. It's a, it's a neat idea. Um, should be raised with the band, what the band as in holding it up further to be able to fit the eyes in. Is that we? So she's looking over the top of my head. <laughs> I don't know. I could draw eyes on here with Sharpies. And then it'll never come off. It's like having a tattoo without all the expense or the pain. <laughs> anyway, it's just after five o'clock, so I'm going to say goodbye. But I am going to let you finish that puzzle. We're nearly at the end of the puzzle. So while you're finishing the puzzle, I'll cut this out. Um, I would like to see if I can do something with, I'm going to see if I can cut around the whiskers for now and then replace the whiskers with, I don't know, black pipe cleaners or something at some stage. Great to have you all here. I have had a lovely time today. We've had lots of chats, all sorts of things. And that wonderful gift of all those subs today. Thank you, Rich Gayer. That really was appreciated. Um, that's just, I, I still find that mind-blowing that you would do that. But I, I understand. Thank you for explaining also the, the value of, this, of the stream to you, especially over um, with COVID stuff going on around the place. Um, yeah, I totally get it. Hydrate. Yes, I shall hydrate. I shall grab my other water bottle because I emptied the first one and hydrate. That's most of that one. <laughs> I must have been needing it, but thank you. I appreciate that. That's all of that one. It can't have been full. It can't have been full. I don't think I normally drink that much in one go. Excellent. And that puzzle is lovely. So that 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 redemption is done. Uh, we'll just wait for that to come up. It should tell me. After you've left the game, it should it usually waits a certain amount of time and then shows me who did the what the picture is. No, it's not going to this time. Okay, it's sunflowers and a cup of tea and some rose hips, the little red dots there. Those are rose hips, the seed little seed pods. And it looks like some apples and some cinnamon sticks and maybe some little tiny star-shaped spice biscuits. And it's making me think of autumn and Christmas and wintry things and all that sort of stuff. Lovely. Right, so I'm going to say goodbye to the YouTubers first. Bye YouTube. Thank you for being here. Happy reading until we meet again. And we'll see you next time or whatever is going to work for you. And then for everybody else who's still here, I will see if we can find someone to go and raid. Or oh, what do you reckon? Is that, is that going to work? 
I love having you guys here. I really enjoy it. It's wonderful to be able to spend the time together to just chill, learn about some stuff, have some cool stories, maybe get a little bit of crafting sort of things done, whatever. Um, but just spend time together with friends. I think that's lovely. So let's see if, let's just go for the owls. I'm feeling like a nice peaceful stream. So let's see if the owl's alive. Yes, they are. Hoot House live stream. So just before we go, I'm going to put in here. Good night and thank you as well, Rich Gayant. Now, what I'm putting in the chat at the moment is something that you can copy, either the... Um, the free raid one or the sub raid one, which if you want to, you can copy it and then paste it in when we go there, when you say hi. So we are going to go over to Hoot House and I look forward to seeing you all again next time or whenever it works for you to be here. It's going to be lots of fun. I'm not quite sure what else. Bye. Have, have fun reading. Bye.